All right, guys, I'm going to do just another uh, breakdown of some sparring footage. This one is with Eric Khan at one of our Nogi classes um, and cover some of the things I do and maybe uh, it'll be useful for you guys. Okay, a lot happens in this sequence here, so I'm going to break it down into small parts. Um, Aircon is going for an Uchimata, which is one of his favorite throws, and you can see here I'm posting on his head. I want to keep him from pulling my head tight to him and breaking my uh, head posture down low, in which case he can start to elevate my leg. Aircon realizes that he can't um, get the Uchimata, so he hooks my far leg, ensuring that I can't step out and get behind him, uh, which is one of my favorite things to do when he goes for the Uchimata. Aircon realizes he shut down my uh, ability to step out, but that is endangering me switching off to the single leg, which is what I try. He does a really smart job of bringing his foot to the outside of my other leg and then controlling my far arm so I can't lock my hands around his leg and keep his leg between my legs, uh, which is what I want to, in order to set up the takedown with the single leg. Once I break the wrist grip, I uh, start attacking the far leg, sort of a, like a double leg or a far leg knee tap. Uh, in order to defend this, he starts to move away, um, puts his feet back on the ground and kind of runs away. And uh, putting the weight on his left leg, it gives me an ability to then step behind his uh, right leg and hook it, which is what I wanted to do all along. From here, I just do a basic uh, rear trip takedown, like the leg hook and a tight body waist, very much like you would do for the uh, one of the headlock uh, defenses, standing headlock defenses. From here, I'm going to move north-south, and I want you to pay attention to my right hand. I did not bring it across his body. This is a mistake a lot of people do when they do a takedown, is they try to bring it across the body into kind of a standard head and arm side control. And a guy who's got a good guard, he's going to bring that knee in as you're doing that. So I make sure to keep blocking the hip, go a little bit north-south, cover his head. Something I do a lot, you'll see me do, he's got that near side frame on my hip. I will often move north-south, uh, which means he's either going to let go of that frame or he's going to follow me with it. And if he follows with me, his elbow will separate away from his body. And I can even sometimes pin his elbow above his head, but it'll open up the space between his elbow and his body. And that's what I'm looking for. Now you'll see uh, that I noticed that it strains out his legs. And so at that point, I will bring my, arm my right arm across his body and start to settle into like a case Kutami position. Um, since I know that he won't be bringing that knee in between me when I switch my arm over since it's been straightened out. <laughs> Aircon is doing a good job of uh, letting me beat the near side arm, so I'm going to go across to the far side arm. Now, normally we're taught to underhook that arm, but a lot of times uh, when I underhook, they can still frame in front of my neck. So you see that I'm going to use my elbow to drive down across his bicep and pin his, for his uh, arm with my forearm. I usually do this with the leg side arm, my right arm in this case, but in this situation, I'm doing it with my left arm, but it still operates the same. It stops him from turning into me, even though he's got the near side uh, uh, arm inside my hip, um, which is really what I want to focus on, is just keeping him flat on his back. The problem for the person on the bottom is that uh, when I control the far side shoulder and they're blocking my near side hip, it leaves their head exposed. So I'm always going to attack the head at that point, try to control it. Uh, he's keeping his head heavy, so I'm going to frame in front of his neck, start attaching a butcher choke type thing. That's uh, often going to make people bring their head up off to kind of tuck their chin, in which case I go under the head. And it's kind of the cat and mouse game we're playing here. <laughs> So what just happened there is a big part of my head control game, which is a big part of my pressure and control game in general. Uh, so you notice he was keeping his head heavy, um, and I talked before in the pressure video about misaligning his head on you know, kind of three different axes. Uh, 
because he can't get under his head and I can't get him to tuck his chin and get under his head the way I want to. I can reach around the top of his head, like I'm cupping the top of his head, and I pull his ear to his shoulder. Often this is a, the pressure of this will make people lift their head, which he did just a little bit, then I was able to get my head underneath his, my hand underneath his head, sorry. And now I'm gonna misalign it the other way. I wanna turn his head so that I can um, not have to worry about him putting me back into guard. So I'm gonna put a lot of shoulder pressure into him, get up on my toes and really drive. Since I can't kind of pull him underneath me, since I don't really have good enough grip for that. <laughs> I've been staying off the balls of my feet so as not to put too much weight on air comp, but here you can see I'm threatening going to the mount. I'm also uh, just controlling from that underhook side control. What I want to do is bait him into turning on his side. That's actually one of my favorite things. It's a catch-22. If he stays on his back, I keep the pin, but if he turns on his side, you can see how I'm starting to set up the guillotine, so I'm reaching around his neck. Uh, he knows this, so he's really trying to stay flat on his back and not turn in. You see how eventually he just gets frustrated being stuck and is going to turn on the side and give me the guillotine. I'm not really going to try to finish it, but I am using it to step over his leg, which is what I was kind of doing, trying to do earlier when I was trying to pull his leg in, step over his leg into what I call the leg pull position. He kind of abandons it, just kind of gives me the three quarters mount. And from there, I'm just going to start working into uh, the arm wrap position. <laughs> Something I do here, I did actually in mount two, is I focus a lot on far side control. A lot of times when people get to the side, the person's trying to turn away, they're going to control the near side arm like you would for kind of a backpack position. Um, but the problem is that once the person starts turning on their side, I lose pressure. So you can see I pull the arm to me to keep the weight on me. I mean the weight on him. <laughs> Since this is a fun roll, you can see that I'm not really on the balls of my feet to be conscious of my uh, foot posture or hip posture or knee posture because I don't want to put too much weight on him. But uh, that is something I would do if this is a more serious roll. Okay, what just happened is a big part of my uh, side control game. You see how he tried to come on top, I had the underhook and I just picked the top leg up and put him back down. And then he shot the underhook, which is the right thing to do, of course. But uh, what I do is when people turn in on the underhook, I'm gonna step over and go into what I call kind of a, a knee shelf mount or a leg shelf mount. Um, it's an absolute great counter to when they have the underhook. Once I clear that arm, I just set up into kind of a mono plata uh, triangle position. And I'm just going to kind of hang out here and see what 
is given to me, and then I'll just finish the Mahapata. This time we're just going to start on the ground since I know that we're recording and I don't want to, you know, be moving out of frame. There's a sequence that I use a lot from the guard right there where I'm going to be constantly snapping the head down and then knee tapping and uh, pulling his foot and uh, using my head-to-head -head control. These are all things that Khan is very aware of, but it's something I use a lot from the sitting guard. Again, I uh, don't actually pull people into my guards, which has come up a lot. There are a few things that I do that over the years I've been told are wrong, and uh, this is one of them. Is I actually love to do the uh, butterfly swoop with double overhooks, um, but you know, been told forever, no, you must always have double underhooks from the butterfly guard. But it's actually one of my most powerful sweeps because I can pull them on top of me. Um, they can't post their hands on the mat to try to leg work out. <laughs> <laughs> this situation of Ericon, that's not necessarily making a mistake. Um, he knows the right thing to do, but the point of why I use you know pressure and I'm gonna use it a ton, but there's still a lot of weight from the top, is that you know it has uh, benefits down the road. Eventually guys know better, but they get their arms out of position just because they're tired or they're afraid to kind of be put back in a bad position again. Uh, which is exactly what happened there. Then I stepped through, went to the S mount, to the R mark. <laughs> Wrist locks, of course, but again, you see how often when I'm sitting, I go to immediately attacking forward into them, breaking their posture down and coming on top. I'm kind of trying to set up the guillotine by pushing my head off to the side, and I keep my head dead in the middle because not today, Satan, not today. <laughs> That was part of my uh, takedown series I use so much, whether from the knees or standing, where I'm going to get an underhook and start to drive them to the side, and if they pose to back away a little bit, I go to the front headlock position. I add this in with the leg catch well, so it's kind of a three attack series, but uh, I use this all the time. <laughs> So this is a really important detail. Aircon did a great job of not letting me get my near side hook in, um, but 
a lot of times when people get the kimura, what's stopping him coming on top is the fact that I'm straightening out my arms on the kimura. A lot of times people will pull the kimura to them from here, and that allows the guy to turn in and come on top. But I'm keeping the kimura pressed away, which is stopping him, bringing his uh, right shoulder to the ground, and turning into me. Again, I want you guys to focus on something I'm doing from the guard where I'm kicking out his leg, pulling his head, uh, always working to upset his base. In judo, this is called kazushi. Always work from the guard to upset the person's base. Uh, I see so many people try to attack a sweep or an arm lock or a choke or something, and they're letting the, the person in their guard have complete posture and complete base, and you always have a little percentage chance there. So I'm not looking for any one particular sweep, but I am just off-balancing him and seeing what opens up. You can see right there, as soon as somebody gets the hooks in or I force the hooks, I immediately go into a leg fold position. I get outside his knee and press his knee down. This is one of the strongest ways to pass, in my opinion, and one of the strongest ways to stop the power of somebody's legs. <laughs> Again, this is another situation I got behind his near side elbow and he tried to roll away. Then I controlled the far side elbow, pulled it in, uh, basically keeping him flat on his back, but also compressing his chest by bringing both elbows together. And then my weight on top is magnified, and the, then he goes ahead and taps to that. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 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 